We're hunting for summer walleye. Now this time of year can be challenging for some anglers, so we're gonna break down the presentations, the techniques, gear, and locations from shallow to deep to help you catch more fish. Along with our buzz bite reports from across the upper Midwest, our cool product segment, and much more. This is Angling Buzz brought to you by Omnia Fishing, a smarter tackle shopping experience. Right now, walleye are spread out based on forage. Now, they're a predatory and opportunistic fish that like to feed on perch, shiners, crayfish, bugs, and cisco. Simply put, they're grazing on whatever the best available forage is. There you go. Thank you, sir. Where and what they're feeding on can determine the best presentation tactic. Cisco's, for example, trolling crankbaits would be a great option. Bug hatches, well, slip floats and pulling spinner rigs, two great options. Shallow water wind bite, casting crankbaits, as well as jigs and soft plastics. Today, we're joined by Minnesota guide and walleye guru, Brad Hawthorne, to get his take on summer walleye fishing. Now, Brad, you spend a lot of time during the summer months chasing walleye. What are some important aspects that you can share with us for targeting them during the summer? Well, Troy, walleye fishing in the summer months has changed drastically over the last few years. I would say with the, the advent of Mega Live and then being able to couple that with side imaging and down imaging, and then obviously the new VX chip from Lake Master, you're really taking a Chinese star and putting it together in your boat. And what I mean by that is you're really wielding a deadly weapon when you go out and you couple the best mapping, the best side imaging, and forward-facing sonar together in a one-boat network in your boat, and all that does is tie all those data points back together. So some days I'm using side imaging, and I'm going back and I'm jig crawling or net rigging, whichever you call it, and we're just throwing at fish, or I'm just throwing at targets is what we're doing on side imaging. I drop a waypoint and I go back and I throw at them. Other times when the fish are moving, you know, if they're not moving in one direction, if they're kind of moving all over, I'll go and ride the bow up there and we will point and shoot. That's using Mega Live, where I'm pointing at a fish and we're actively targeting those individual fish on Mega Live or smaller groups of fish. And that's all, all finding fish in the summer is, is accurately reading the data that's given to you on your, your helix or, or your whatever your sonar is, interpreting that data effectively and then catching the fish that is what it's about so that's that's what's really changed in in the summer haunts of walleye fishing that and my favorite part is we've been using a lot of plastics for walleye for a really long time and you ask any of my customers that have done it when you're when you go out and you can leave the bait in the cooler and catch more fish on artificials you catch more fish because you can process fish faster you also get more enjoyment doing it and by using plastics just makes you a better angler. Anytime you're swimming a lure or trying to mimic something that's live, your angling skills get better just because you're moving a lure, you're figuring out which way the fish want it, and you're, you're tucking that back in your library for the next time you go out fishing. Yes, that's very true. And what are some of your favorite presentations for summer walleye? So it's number one favorite summer walleye fishing approach. I call it jig crawling because I'm not going to call it Ned rigging because it is different, right? And what we found in the early days on Mille Lacs, you'll see a lot, there's a lot of guys promoting it, but it started here. It started right here with when we started doing more uh, smallmouth trips about 15, 20 years ago. Um, Ned rigging is an extremely effective bait or working not just net rigging, but working baits in general along the bottom for smallmouth is very effective. It's also very effective for walleye, so you could see how you'd catch both of them at the same time. Football delivery. And what had happened was on some days. Oh yeah, there you go. You'd catch a lot more walleye, which led a lot of us to believe that there was something here. So we started to hone that technique. So what I call jig crawling is just a little bit bigger than net rigging. So I'm using a three to a three and a half inch worm or whatever type of bait, sometimes that's a minnow bait, and I'm using a Ned style or a light 3 16 football or pill head, whichever. Let your bottom composition determine what jig head you're gonna use, and then literally just working these, these lures. Think the opposite of snap jigging. Sometimes you're just popping it on the bottom, sometimes you're swimming it for a foot, letting it fall, but what I call jig crawling or Ned rigging, for walleyes has absolutely exploded across the Midwest the last about two or three years here. And that is largely due to 
once our plastics getting so much better i mean that's gone leaps and bounds the last two years number two being able to bring tungsten jigs into an affordable level so guys can use smaller profiles, still add color, and get the jig down to those depths where the walleyes are at. So like those three things are really what brought, you know, jig crawling, Ned rigging into the limelight for walleye fishing. And now let's talk about Mille Lacs. You spent a lot of time out there. What's your take on the state of the fishing there right now? I love this question, Troy. The, the, the state of the Mille Lacs fishery is, uh, you know, Mille Lacs is close to the Twin Cities. It's kind of like days of our lives with the fishery going on. But the one thing that hasn't changed in Mille Lacs is that if you go to Mille Lacs, you catch fish. And that is an undeniable fact of Mille Lacs. You come to Mille Lacs year round and you catch fish. It's the most consistent large body of water in the state of Minnesota. And no matter how hard people try, you're not gonna knock it off that short list. Well, thank you, Brad, for your time. I always appreciate it. And up next in our Timely Topics feature, we're going to be joining Tony Roach for more Summer Walleye. Hey, I'm Tony Roach for Angling Buzz. I want to talk about my favorite midsummer walleye patterns and then also locations for walleyes midsummer. You know, let's start with plastics. Plastics in the weeds. You know, there's a lot of lakes with great vegetation this time of year. Although anglers sometimes struggle to be able to fish or navigate through that vegetation, plastics are a great way to kind of pitch it up into the vegetation and work it through the vegetation to pull out walleyes. Now, I usually position my boat off the deeper edges and I'll work the vegetation up sometimes even on the inside edge of the weed line and then I'll work those plastics all the way out Primarily casting, you know, uh, if you get a calm day like we have today, you know, they're very, very boat spooky. However, you don't have to worry about dumping your, your presentation all the way down to the bottom. You know, walleyes will chase when they're in the vegetation. The bait fish are, tend to be up high. They're feeding up high. So when I'm pitching and throwing plastics, a lot of times I don't even worry about it hitting the bottom. I just kind of work it or snap it through the weeds and I'll work those presentations all the way back to the boat and then just continue on down the line. That's what I love about fishing plastics versus live bait, not just this time of year, but all season, is I can really whip that bait, I can pop it, I can add a lot of action. A lot of times, you know, if you get a fish that hits a, a let's say a shiner minnow or a minnow in general, they rip that bait down or they pull it off the hook, so you only get one shot at that fish. This fish hit it three, four, five different times before he committed to it. So having that plastic on there really saved me. And a lot of times too, when you're fishing live bait, they'll short bite it, whereas the plastic, they'll finally just come up and smoke that thing. Now another presentation that works really good for casting are crankbaits. Either just a simple shad wrap or a jerk bait. You can work a suspending jerk bait over the top of the vegetation quite well and you're gonna catch all sorts of species of fish, but walleyes love that erratic jerk bait action as well. Now, as you get into mid-lake structures, and we're fishing mid-lake, uh, mid-lake humps, I love jigging wraps. Jigging wraps are a great way to just drop on top of fish, uh, pitching as I see them, whether I see them on side imaging, whether I see them on forward-facing sonar, to drop that jigging wrap is, is extremely effective. It's interesting, it changes, and actually how you actually fish this, ba fish this bait, Al fishes with a pretty aggressive snap. Uh, sometimes I fish it with a slower, uh, pop and you know just pull it up and let it fall back to the bottom but there is an art to the retrieve if there's a little bit of vegetation let's say sand grass or debris on the bottom you might want to try rigging like red tailed chubs even pulling spinners across there bottom bouncers and spinners are extremely effective midsummer walleyes love night crawlers so this time of year is the time of year that you want to capitalize on that now lastly one of my go-to's on a lot of basin situation lakes, like you take a lake like Mille Lacs or even Leech or Lake of the Woods, some of these deeper basin type of lakes, it's hard to beat lead cork trolling. You know, these fish are out there, they're feeding on pelagic type of bait, they're roaming out in the basin, and really it's, it's pretty slow and methodical until you find those schools to, to do any sort of pitching. So trolling, particularly trolling lead core, is extremely effective for walleyes. You can use a wide variety of baits, from stick baits to shad type of baits. When the water temperatures get really warm, I like a fast wobbling bait, but then using that lead core to get those baits down to the desired depth. You know, what lead core gives you 
is it gives you a lot of motion on your bait. It's very speed dependent. When you're trolling lead core, as you're speeding up and slowing down or as you're doing turns, your baits are really rising and falling in the water column. And that's a, a, a key part to catching fish out in that basin is, is just those baits constantly moving. When you're, when you're trolling those big schools of fish that are chasing bait, you know, they'll follow your baits for a long time. So um, adding those turns and increasing your speed and changing it up really makes a big difference. One key tip when you're trolling lead core is even if it's a calm day or you're not stacking rods, is I use a lot of trolling boards. Trolling boards will give you that erratic action without you having to do anything. Now when you get out trolling lead core, like I said, it's very speed dependent. You know, a good starting average speed would be right around that two mile an hour mark and try to get consistent speed. It's, it's very important, especially when you're trolling big water, big waves, try riding the trough or driving downwind or quartering downwind. That'll keep your speed a lot more consistent when you're trolling lead core. And then also mixing up the baits. I, I like to use baits that uh, mimic the bait fish that are in the system. You know, if it's if it's a real heavily shiner based bite or tulabee ciscos, I'll make sure that my colors and the profile of my bait kind of imitate that. If it's a real perch dominant uh, forage base, for example, and let's say you had a big young of the year perch hatch, then I'll kind of cater everything towards fishing those perch patterns, those brighter patterns, fire tigers, that sort of thing. That's kind of the the system that I want to run when it comes to trolling. Those are my three type of go-tos. If you've got those three techniques rigged up and set up in your boat, you're ready for anything that the walleyes can throw at you. Great walleye anglers like Tony, they're well-rounded in a variety of techniques and lures and gear. They can catch them casting, trolling, and everything in between. It's time for this week's Buzz Bite Report. To kick it off, we're gonna join Toby Cavallivog on Leech Lake. The main lake bite continues to be about the rocks and weeds. Uh, in that type of structure, you're gonna wanna fish with plastics and or jig wraps, uh, smallmouth bass, ned rigs, um, drop shots, those type of things through the rocks, the deeper rocks, eight to eight to 12 feet of water, find those big boulders and, and kind of drag it through the, through the rocks and you're gonna find some smallmouth. The walleyes aren't too far from there still. Um, spinners are working, crankbaits in the evening and the slip bobbers with leeches and night crawlers during the daytime. Also around the weeds, slip bobbers, uh, jigs and crawlers, uh, jigs and plastics through the weeds, snapping them through. You're gonna find your largemouth bass and walleyes in the weeds as well. Uh, musky action, if fish are pushing shallow and they are starting to show up on the rocks and in the weeds. But the fish are biting, it's slowed down a little bit with the uh, cool front, um, but it's still good. Leisure Outdoor Adventures is on the water every day and we're having a good time. So hope you make it up here too. Thanks, Toby. Now let's head to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner. Hey, doing something different today. I'm out fishing with my good friend Mike, and we parked the Lund boat. And there's a bunch of rivers up around Lake Vermilion. I mean, there's a handful of them. We can go out and wade and cast, and uh, it's a multi species bonanza. It's a warm day today, so it feels really good to be in the water doing this. We're catching a little bit of everything bass, walleye. It's not uncommon to catch some pike doing this and muskies. Just waiting, we're casting small plastics. You can throw like a blue fox, number three or number four, small spinner baits. Uh, plastics like we're doing today, we're just throwing like some big bite plastics on, on uh, eighth quarter ounce moon eye jigs, that's working. It's just a fun, different approach to fishing. I mean, you can't beat the scenery, the solitude, and uh, this gets you away from thing. And fish are usually pretty cooperative because they just don't get a lot of pressure. Have a great week and be safe out there. Thanks, Billy. Now let's jump down to the Alexandria area with Joe Segura. When you think of Alexandria, you think of water, and we have a lot of it. We have lakes littered right through town. We have lakes littered across the whole entire county. Over 100 good fishing lakes around the county, and it gets a little bit daunting. Where do we even start? Um, lucky for you, uh, almost every one of these lakes has all the species that you're after. Your northern, your bass, your walleye, your sunfish, your crappie. So with that said, each lake has different quantities and they have different sizes. So if you go on the DNR website, you can see uh, which lake would be a little bit better than others, you know, if you're, if you're after a specific species. But for the most part, you can catch all the species in just about every lake. Again, just your walleye are on the outside weed edges or deeper scattered throughout the, the basin. Your sunfish will be in the weeds anywhere from that 16 feet to uh, five foot area still. You get up against the pencil weeds, there's a bunch along there. 
Um, and of course your bass are on the outside weed edges as well. Look in these areas, no matter what lake you're on, you should have some good action. Thanks Joe. Now let's head over to Devil's Lake in North Dakota with Jason Mitchell. Devil's Lake's been fishing really well this summer and uh, just a lot of year classes of fish I and mean, there's a lot of 15 to 20 inch fish then there's some bigger fish. It's really turned into a bottom bouncer bite. If you're just looking at coming out here, you know, and just trying to catch fish, I don't think you can go wrong. You know, pulling bottom bouncers and spinners or just a bottom bouncer and a plain snell, a bottom bouncer and a float. It doesn't really matter. You can use a slow depth half crawler, you can use a leech. You can use uh, soft plastics like the eye candy on a spinner. But uh, basically we're just targeting transitions is kind of the key. Either, you know, pulling road beds, for example, you have the hard bottom transition or the old shore light, for example, it's in that 20 to 24 foot range where there's a little bit of rock any type of rock structure, any type of rock weed edge. We're still catching some fish shallow, you know, pitch and crank baits, you know, especially for bigger fish, but bottom bouncers, hard bottom transitions in that 22 to 16 feet of water is catching a lot of fish on Devil's Lake right now. Thanks, Jason. Now let's head over to Michigan with Captain Chad Diltz. Here in the state of Michigan, we're starting to see some really good salmon numbers. Most of the salmon have really migrated into their point of entry areas like Frankfurt, Manistee, Grand Haven, and Muskegon. We're seeing some good numbers being caught in all those areas. We're starting to get an established thermocline, as I said last week. However, it's finally starting to get a lot deeper. We've had some heavy southwest winds. That's set up for some great fishing, 75 to 90 down. Uh, anglers wanting to target lake trout and salmon, both trolling and jigging. That's a great depth to focus. Smallmouth have, have gotten a little bit tougher. A lot of the shallower fish are pretty much gone and void. Uh, a lot of the adults have worked their way, their way over the break, try to really target those fish on the underwater points and inside turns. Anglers that are looking to get out and do some walleye fishing, Saginaw Bay is still fishing really well. Um, they're into some really good crawler harness fishing. Fish them slow, fish them on bottom. Um, you know, people are having really good success doing that as well. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Omnia Fishing. We're talking summer walleye, and we're gonna start out with the Big Bite Baits Sensation Slim Minnow. This has a nice narrow profile, which is the size of a lot of the bait fish across the upper Midwest. This is perfect for snap jigging walleye. They have different color patterns that kind of resemble bait fish, some brighter color patterns as well. And it's scent infused formula. This is a new line of soft plastics from Big Bite Baits, the Sensation Slim Minnow. And next from Rapala, the Husky Jerk, available in some new colors. This is a tried and tested bait. This is a suspending jerk bait. It's also rattling as well. You can cast this like a jerk bait. You can also troll this. You can use this with planer boards. Again, this is just a bait over the decades has proven to be a fish catcher for a variety of different species, especially for walleye. The Rapala Husky Jerk in some new colors. And next from Offshore Tackle, the OR20 Pro Weight System. For trolling walleye with planer boards, well, this is a great kit to have in the boat. It includes clips, split rings, weights from half ounce all the way up to three ounces, inline weights, snap weights, everything you need for trolling walleye with planer boards. The OR20 Pro Weight System from Offshore Tackle. You know, the summertime can get pretty warm and hot in the upper Midwest and to keep protected from the sun is important. And that's why this next product is great from Blackfish, the Swift Hoodie. This actually features a UPF rating of 50 plus, so it'll keep you cool and protected from the sun. Nice, comfortable four-way stretch. It also helps wick away moisture to keep you cool and comfortable in the summer heat. The Blackfish Swift Hoodie, UPF 50. And lastly, from St. Croix Rods, the Legend Tournament Walleye Series. This is specifically the Jig and Wrap. This is a technique-specific rod. St. Croix offers a lot of different rods for different techniques, and this is great for snap jigging during the summertime, all season really in open water. This is a seven foot medium power, moderate fast action. You could fish jigging wraps on this. You could also fish you know, jig heads if you're vertical jigging, if you're casting out over sand gravel flats, you get the St. Croix quality and all the components on here and a nice full cork handle, a really comfortable rod to use. The Legend Tournament Walleye, seven foot one inch, medium power, moderate fast action. For these products and many more, visit omniafishing.com. And up next, it's time for our technique of the week.
This is a rig that we use a lot throughout the summer and into the fall. It's a really great technique and it, I've caught a lot of really big walleyes on it. It's simply the bottom bouncer and an original Rapala. This actually happens to be a 13, a bigger one. I'm targeting a pretty big fish. This la uh, lake to feed on a lot of Cisco's and Tulabies. Uh, I think uh, Troy's got a, uh, a number 11 broken back but I got a three ounce bottom bouncer and what we're gonna do is just drop it down to the bottom, bottom and move really quickly. And some of these spots are uh, so big. He's got, well, that, how long did that take? He, a minute? He, he got it down to the bottom, he's got one on. Yeah, it was a good minute. The nice thing about this, this rig is in, in the fact that your ability to cover a lot of water really quickly, you know what I mean? That's the nice thing about the bouncer. In the original Rapala, a lot of these spots are really big flats. You come up to a lot of these big Canadian lakes and the bars, like this particular bar here, is, you know, it's a half a mile long, you know, so, but what, I just drove over it. We put a bunch of waypoints and coordinates and there's fish spread out all along this edge of this big windblown point. So what we're gonna do is get down and start moving along it about, this is a little bit faster technique. We're gonna be ro rolling at about eight, you know, 0.8 to about 1.2 miles an hour. Right there, come here. Three-way rigging, you know, it's not as popular as other techniques when it comes to walleye, but it can be really effective. And as always here, we want to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species and remind you anytime you're leaving any body of water, clean, drain, dry. There are links below in the description for the products featured in today's show. And if you have any questions, let us know down below in the comments. And here's another video from Angling Buzz.